There is something in John Williams' music that is completely ordinary and common, but he uses it so often and so consistently that it might actually be one of the secret ingredients to why his music has so much life and energy. While working on my recent video about the second inversion chord and how John Williams uses it in an unusual way to modulate in the hook score, I noticed something else. In the accompaniment parts, there's an almost obsessive use of suspensions. At the very beginning of that hook cue, we have this 9-1 suspension over and over in the strings. And even as the chords change, the suspensions keep happening. So instead of just B flat seven, he uses B flat seven sus four. I thought that was pretty cool, something to make that moment special. But then I noticed he did it in the next section too. They're almost always in background parts, parts that are not even that easy to hear behind the main melodies and flourishes, but they are adding this constant push and pull of tension, of squeeze and release. It's like the music is always pulsing and vibrating and never quite at rest. So even when the harmony is diatonic and major, it's not fully settled. Just to catch you up, if you don't know, a suspension is when you hold out a chord tone while the other parts change. Usually this creates a dissonance, which then gets resolved by step. So for example, we could go G major to C major. But instead of resolving the D down to C when the chords change, we suspend it, holding it out for a moment longer before letting it resolve down to the C. It's a really satisfying feeling, and it gives the music a lot more motion and push and pull of tension and release. In traditional harmony, the suspended note has to be prepared, which means that first we hear it as a consonant, like that D in the G major chord, and then it becomes dissonant. But in contemporary harmony, it's typical to just go right into the suspension, not really worry about that preparation. There's another thing John Williams does in that same hook cue, which is not technically a suspension, but has a similar effect by the way he uses it. He'll use a chord with an extension, like F major add nine, but alternate the non-chord tone with the chord tone back and forth. At one point he does this with the violins and violas. Okay, so I thought maybe this is a cool feature of the hook score, but does it happen anywhere else? Well, here's the oboe part near the beginning of Harry's Wondrous World. The woodwinds in Marion's theme from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Or check out the trombones in this part of Ray's theme from The Force Awakens. Or these cellos in the cue The Triceratops from Jurassic Park. By now, hopefully you're catching on. Turns out this isn't just a thing in the hook score after all. There's example after example of a very liberal use of suspensions or these pulsing suspension type figures across John Williams' writing across decades. Sometimes it's 4-3 or 9-1 or 7-1. Whatever it is, there is this constant push and pull of underlying energy. Like I said in the beginning, on a cue-by-cue -cue basis, this is not all that interesting. 
Suspensions are a pretty basic technique. The interesting part is the almost obsessive use of them. They're not just a thing that gets used once in a while, they happen a lot. So just for fun, I thought I'd take this for a spin, see what would happen if I overused suspensions on an already existing melody. I'm gonna go with the Rito Village theme from Breath of the Wild for no other reason than that's the first one that came to mind. So first, here's the non-suspension version. Here's what we get if we add just a little extra movement to those string parts. If you didn't think that was earth shatteringly different, I agree with you. This is more about subtlety and these little extra rubs and soft dissonances that keep the texture rich. This is not like a completely change your music with this one trick type of thing. Not everything has to be that, but more like one more element you can add to your toolkit to make your music a touch more sophisticated. Again, to me, it feels like there's like a bubbling energy underneath that's keeping us a little more on the edge of our seats than the version that had just the chord tones held out. And finally, here's one where we do the pulsing woodwind thing like from Harry Potter. In this case, even though there are extensions or added tones like ninths and elevenths, because of the way the altered tone alternates with the chord tone, we still get that suspension type of pulsation. So when does this not happen? While doing my research, I noticed that he doesn't seem to use this in the more atonal or octatonic cues. Things like chase scenes, space battles, things like that. It seems to be much more common in themes that are tonal, usually relatively diatonic, and that are more like a lyrical melody with accompaniment. If you missed the video that led me down this path to begin with, then you don't want to miss it again. Because there we look at another moment in that same hook cue from John Williams, where he gives us an incredible modulation in a really unexpected way. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.